the 36th year that it is being celebrated. We now see the procession entering the basilica, accompanied by incense. On behalf of Vatican Media, my name is Sister Bernadette. It is my pleasure to provide the English language commentary for this liturgy, along with Sean Doherty, a seminarian at the Beta College in Rome. And I'd like to join Sister Bernadette in that warm welcome from a beautiful Rome this morning and from wherever you're joining us on behalf of Vatican Media, I'd like to welcome you to this live broadcast. Some of you may be joining us through various Vatican Media channels, perhaps the Vatican News web portal, Facebook live feed or YouTube channel, the Vatican News or Radio Vaticana app. To those of you joining through those television stations making this broadcast possible, Catholic TV, EWTN, Salt and Light TV, at Madishan TV, Catholic Faith Network, Shalom World Television Networks, Shalom TV in India. Some are joining us through Luminous Radio and Radio Maria Philippines. Still others joining through other digital platforms. Welcome to you all and thank you for joining us. As many of you know, the World Youth Day was established by Pope John Paul II after about 300,000 young people from all over the world gathered with him in Rome for the International Jubilee of Youth on Palm Sunday in the year 2000. That later became an annual event, and every now and then there is an international event, the first of which took place in Buenos Aires, the last of which took place in Panama. We see our Holy Father now making his way to the altar. The Diocesan World Youth Day was not able to take place on Palm Sunday last year because, as we remember, Rome was in lockdown. And so our Holy Father called the youth of the diocese to participate in Holy Mass on the Feast of Christ the King last year. And during that Mass, the cross, the World Youth Day cross, which originally was given by Pope John Paul II to World Day Pilgrims. That cross passed from the youth of Panama to the youth of Portugal. And at the end of that Mass, our Holy Father then said that from that time on, World Youth Day would be moved to the Solemnity of Christ the King. He said the center of the celebration remains the mystery of Jesus Christ, the Redeemer of man. As St. John Paul II, the initiator and patron of World Youth Day, emphasized. Our Holy Father now incensing a, an image of Our Lady a very good reminder that as we celebrate this, these sacred mysteries, heaven and earth are united under one King, Jesus Christ, the King of the universe.
for those of you who may be following in a missal today, the liturgy will follow with the Feast of Christ the King. You'll be able to follow along in your missals. The music today, since this is a diocesan liturgy, a diocesan celebration of World Youth Day is being provided by the diocesan choir under the direction of Marco Frizina. Nel nome del Padre, del Figlio e dello Spirito Santo. Amen. La pace sia con voi. E con il tuo Spirito. Fratelli e sorelle, all'inizio di questa celebrazione eucaristica invochiamo la misericordia di Dio, fonte di riconciliazione e di comunione. And we've been invited to recall our sins before beginning this sacred liturgy. Pietà di noi, Signore, contro di te abbiamo peccato. Mostraci, Signore, la tua misericordia, e donaci la tua salvezza. Dio Onipotente, abbia misericordia di noi, perdoni i nostri peccati e ci conduca alla vita eterna.
preghiamo. Dio Onipotente ed Eterno, che hai voluto ricapitolare tutte le cose in Cristo, tuo Figlio, Re dell'Universo, fa che ogni creatura, libera dalla schiavitù del peccato, ti serva e ti lodi senza fine. Per il nostro Signore Gesù Cristo, tuo Figlio che Dio, e vi regna con te, nell'unità dello Spirito Santo per tutti i secoli dei secoli. Amen. And we pray, Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole creation, set free from slavery, may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. Dal libro del profeta Daniele. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. As the visions during the night continued, I saw one like a son of man coming on the clouds of heaven. When he reached the Ancient One and was presented before him, the one like a son of man received dominion, glory and kingship. All peoples, nations and languages serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not be taken away. His kingship shall not be destroyed. Il Signore regna, si riveste di splendore. Our response today, the Lord is King, He is robed in majesty. The Lord is King, in splendor robed. Robed is the Lord and girt about with strength. He has made the world firm not to be moved. Your throne stands firm from of old, from everlasting. You are Lord. Davvero degni di fede i tuoi insegnamenti. La santità si addice alla tua casa. Your decrees are worthy of trust indeed. Holiness befits your house, O oh Lord, for length of days. A reading from the book of Revelation. Dal libro dell'Apocalisse di San Giovanni Apostolo. Gesù Cristo è Jesus Christ is the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, who has made us into a kingdom, priests for his God and Father. To him be glory and power for ever and ever. Amen. 
Behold, he is coming amid the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. All the peoples of the earth will lament him. Yes, Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, the one who is, and who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. Gospel procession now making its way to the ambo as the choir provides the communion antiphon. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Il Signore sia con voi. E con il tuo Spirito. Dal Vangelo secondo Giovanni. Gloria a te, oh Signore. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. We prepare ourselves to hear this beautiful story from the Gospel of John as the deacon incenses the Gospel. In quel tempo, Pilato disse a Gesù, Sei tu il re dei giudei. Gesù rispose, Dici questo da te, oppure altri ti hanno parlato di me. Pilato disse, Pilate said to Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? 
your own nation and the chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But, as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king. Jesus answered, You say I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Parola del Signore The deacon who proclaimed the gospel now bringing the book of the gospels to be venerated by Pope Francis who now blesses us with the blessing of our Lord present in his word. We prepare ourselves now to hear the words prepared by Pope Francis reflecting on today's gospel, in which we'll also hear some things about World Youth Day, which we are also celebrating today here in the Diocese of Rome and throughout other dioceses in the world. Two images from the Word of God that we have heard can help us approach Jesus as King of the universe. The first, taken from the revelation of St. John and foreshadowed by the prophet Daniel in the first reading, is described in the words, He is coming on the clouds. The reference is to the glorious coming of Jesus as Lord at the end of history. The second image is that of the Gospel. Christ who stands before Pilate and tells him, I am a king. Dear young friends, it's good for us to stop and think about these two images of Jesus as we begin our journey towards the 2023 World Youth Day in Lisbon. Let us reflect then on the first image. Jesus who comes with the clouds. This image evokes Christ's coming in glory at the end of time. It helps us understand that the final word on our life will belong to Jesus, not to us. He is, as the scripture also tells us, the one who rides upon the clouds. And this manifests his power, which is in the heavens. He is the Lord. He is the Lord who comes from above. He's the sun that dawns upon us from on high and never sets. The one who endures while everything else passes away. Our sure and eternal hope is the Lord. 
This prophecy of hope illumines our nights. It tells us that God is coming, that He is present and at work, guiding our history towards Himself, towards all goodness. He comes on the clouds to reassure us, as if to say, I will not leave you when storms gather around your lives. I am always with you. I come to shine and to bring back the bright sky. The prophet Daniel, on the other hand, tells us that he saw the Lord coming with the clouds as he watched in the night vision. Night visions. God comes in the night, often with the dark clouds that gather over our lives. We all know about these moments. We need to be able to recognize Him, to look beyond the night, to lift our gaze in order to see Him amid the gloom. Dear young people, you too must watch in the night vision. So what does that mean? In other words, let your eyes remain bright even amid the darkness. Never stop seeking the light amid whatever darkness we may bear in our hearts or see all around us, to lift our gaze from the earth to heaven. Not to escape, no, but to resist the temptation to remain imprisoned by our fears. That's the danger. That it would be our fears that by which we make decisions thinking only of ourselves and feeling sorry for ourselves. Lift up your eyes, get up. This is the invitation. Lift up your eyes, get up. This is the invitation that the Lord speaks to us. And I wanted to repeat it in my message to you for this year of our journey together. You've been entrusted with an exciting but also challenging task to stand tall while everything around us seems to be collapsing, to be sentinels, prepared to see the light in night visions, to be builders amid the ruins. And there are many ruins in our day, in our day today to be capable of dreaming. And this, for me, is the key. A young person who is not able to dream, these, these poor young people have become old before time because they've lost the capacity to dream. Because this is what people who dream do. What do they do? They do not remain in the darkness, but they light a candle, a flame of hope, that announces the coming of dawn, to dream, Be, remain awake, and, and look toward the future courageously. I would like to say this to you. All of us are grateful to you when you dream. But young people, when they dream, uh, make a lot of noise, make a lot of noise, because your noise is the fruit of your dream. It means that you don't want to live in the night. When you make Jesus your life stream and you embrace him with joy and contagious enthusiasm, this does us good. Thank you for all those times when you work courageously to make your dreams come true when you don't stop believing in the light, even in dark moments, when you commit yourselves passionately to make our world more beautiful and humane. Thank you for all those times when you cultivate the dream of fraternity, when you take to heart to heal the wounds of God's creation, when you fight to ensure respect for the dignity of the vulnerable and spread the spirit of solidarity and sharing. Thank you above all because in a world that thinks only of present gain, that tends to stifle grand ideals, you have not lost the ability to dream. You don't live sleepy or anesthetized. 
dreaming and living. This helps us adults and the church as well. Yes, as a church too, we need to dream. We need youthful enthusiasm. We need the ardor of the young people in order to be witnesses of the God who is always young. And I'd like to tell you another thing. Many of your dreams correspond to those of the gospel. Fraternity, solidarity, justice, peace. These are Jesus' own dreams for humanity. Don't be afraid to open yourselves to an encounter with him. He loves your dreams and helps you to make them come true. Cardinal Martini used to say, that the church and society need dreamers who remain ever open to the surprises of the Holy Spirit. Dreamers who make us remain open to the surprises of the Holy Spirit. That's beautiful, isn't it? I hope and pray that you will become one of these dreamers. So now let's look at the second image. To Jesus who says to Pilate, I am a king. We are struck by Jesus' determination, his courage, his supreme freedom. Jesus was arrested. He was led to the praetorium. He was interrogated by those who had the power to condemn him to death. In such a situation, he had every right, every natural right to defend himself and even to, to organize things by making a compromise. Instead, Jesus did not hide his identity. He did not camouflage his intentions or take advantage of the opening that even Pilate left open for him. No, he doesn't take advantage of that. With the courage born of truth, he answered, I am a king. He took responsibility for his own life. I have come for a mission and I will carry it to fulfillment in order to bear witness to my father's kingdom. For this, he says, I was born and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Jesus is like that. Jesus came without duplicity to proclaim by his life that his kingdom is different from the kingdoms of the world, that God does not reign in order to increase his power and to crush others. He does not reign by the force of arms. His kingdom is the kingdom of love. I am king, but I am the king of the kingdom of love. I am king of the kingdom of those who give their lives to save others. Dear young people, Jesus' freedom is attractive. Let us allow it to resonate within us, to challenge us, to awaken in us the courage born of truth. So let us ask ourselves this. Were I in Pilate's place, looking Jesus in the eye, what would I be ashamed of? Faced with the Jesus of truth, the truth that is Jesus, what are the ways I am deceitful or duplicitous? What are the ways in which I displease him? Each one of us has things. Let's, let's look for them. All of us have them, these types of, of um, two-facedness, trying to, trying to make things happen in such a way that we don't have to face the cross. It's good to stand before Jesus, who is truth, in order to be set free from our illusions. It's good to worship Jesus, and as a result, to be inwardly free to see life as it really is and not be deceived by the fads of the moment and the displays of consumerism that are like fireworks that dazzle but are deadening. Friends, we are not here to be enchanted by the sirens of the world, but to take our lives in hand in order to live it to the full. In this way, with Jesus' freedom, we will find the courage we need to swim against the current. And this is something I'd like to underline, to go against the current, to have the courage to go against the tide. 
not against other people. That's a temptation we feel every day like those perpetual victims and conspiracy theorists who are always throwing blame on other people. No, going against the current means rather that I go against the unhealthy current of our own selfishness, closed-mindedness and rigidity. Sometimes we try to find our own comfort. That's not what this is. It's to become more like Jesus, for he teaches us how to encounter evil only with the mild and lowly force of good, without shortcuts, without duplicity. Our world, beset by so many evils, does not need any other ambiguous com compromises, people who are always on the edge of the fence and go back and forth like the tide or swing to the right or left depending on what is most convenient those who want everything to um, to be balanced a Christian who lives like this seems to be more someone who wants everything in place than a Christian someone who's always looking for a way that in, in which they won't need to dirty their hands but they're not Christian, serious Christians have the courage not to be young people who always have to have everything in place. Be free and authentic. Be the critical conscience of society. Don't be afraid to criticize us. We need your criticism. Many of you are criticizing, for example, about um, pollution in the environment. We need that. Be, be free to criticize, be, have, be passionate about the truth so that with your dreams you can say, my life is not a slave to the mindset of the world. I am free because I reign with, just, with Jesus for justice, love, and peace. Dear young people, it is my hope that each one of you can joyfully say, with Jesus, I too am a king. I am a king. I too reign as a living sign of the love of God, of his compassion and his tenderness. I am a dreamer dazzled by the light of the gospel, and I watch with hope in the night visions. And whenever I fall, I discover anew in Jesus the courage to continue fighting and hoping, the courage to continue dreaming at every age of life. Our Holy Father speaking on this diocesan World Youth Day being celebrated here with about 2,000 young people. We've been seeing them every now and then on our screens hearing once again our Holy Father begging them to dream to let their voices be heard because their voices also are important. I think we also heard him asking us to go back to the dreams we may have had as young people or to recapture the dreams that our Lord might be giving to us dreams that cons are consistent with his kingdom. Last year, Pope Francis concluded his liturgy telling the dear young people that were there, cry out with your life that Christ lives, that Christ reigns, that Christ is the Lord. And in this way, we will be bringing to fulfillment the dream of God the Father for which he made us. If you keep silent, the Pope told them, I tell you, the very stones will cry out. We prepare now to profess our faith once again in Jesus Christ, our Lord and King, the Son of God. A creed we will say with all of these young people here, but also with 
all of our brothers and sisters gather today in the celebration of the Feast of Christ the King. Cristo es Rey del Universo, el Señor de la Chiesa. 
Christ is the King of the universe and the Lord of the Church. Let us confidently lift up to Him our prayer so that He might renew everything in justice and love. For the Holy Church, united to you, meek King of Peace, may she express with the light of the Gospel the new justice you introduced on the cross. For the pastors of the people of God that remaining faithful to the ministry received, they might imitate your love toward the least in your kingdom. For the society in which we live, may it recognize the dignity of every person you have redeemed, and may its sensitivity to the weak and defenseless grow. For those trapped in the sorrowful situation of sin, may they not hesitate to entrust themselves to your mercy and begin to live a new life. For the young people of Rome and all the world, that docile to your will and transformed by your grace, they might joyously live constantly seeking your face. Lord Jesus, you broke the yoke of sin and death on the cross. Extend to every creature your lordship of grace and peace. Grant us the certainty that every human suffering is a seed that opens up the blessed realities of your kingdom. been prepared and our Holy Father will now offer the gifts of bread and wine which will soon become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Concelebrating the sacred liturgy today, our 
Cardinal Angelo de Donatis, who is the Cardinal Vicar of Rome, since this is a diocesan celebration of World Youth Day, and Cardinal Farrell, the Prefect of the Dicastery of Family and Life, Laity Family and Life, under whose auspices the World Youth Day is organized. We've been, as I said, seeing young people. They've been participating. We heard them proclaim the petitions, some of them representing their scout troops here. About 2,000 gathered here today. Many of them arriving on foot this morning since pilgrimage is one of the highlights of World Youth Day. Some of these young people departed from St. John Lateran Square this morning since that is the mother church of the Diocese of Rome. of you participating from afar, we can lift up our prayer as this incense rises to God. We unite our own prayer for these young people, for the young people throughout the world, called to become servants of Christ the King, manifesting Him in their lives. they too might be transformed into the body of Christ. Those of you joining in a missal, with a missal, the Eucharistic prayer that will be prayed today is number three. Pregate, fratelli e sorelle, perché il mio vostro sacrificio sia gradito a Dio Padre Onipotente. questo sacrificio all'ode e gloria del suo nome, per il bene nostro e di tutta la sua santa Chiesa. Ti offriamo, oh Padre, il sacrificio di Cristo. As we offer you, O oh Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace. Amen. Il Signore sia con voi. E con il tuo Spirito. In alto i nostri cuori. Sono rivolti al Signore. Rendiamo grazie al Signore nostro Dio. E cosa buona e giusta. E veramente cosa buona e giusta, il nostro dovere e fonte di salvezza, e rendere grazie sempre in ogni luogo a te, Signore Padre Santo, Dio Onipotente ed Eterno. Tu, con olio di esultanza, for you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness, as eternal priest and King of all creation, so that, by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption and making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. 
And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominations, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory. <coughs> <coughs> Veramente santo sei tu, o oh Padre, ed è giusto che ogni creatura ti lodi. Per mezzo del tuo Figlio, il Signore nostro Gesù Cristo, nella potenza dello Spirito Santo, fai vivere e santifica l'universo e continui a radunare intorno a te un popolo che, dall'Oriente all'Occidente, offre il tuo nome in sacrificio perfetto. Ti preghiamo umilmente, santifica e consacra con il tuo spirito i doni che ti abbiamo presentato, perché diventino il corpo e il sangue del tuo Figlio, il Signore nostro Gesù Cristo, che ci ha comandato di celebrare questi misteri. Egli, nella notte in cui veniva tradito, prese il pane. Ti rese grazie con la preghiera di benedizione. Lo spezzò lo diede ai Suoi discepoli e disse, «Prendete e mangiatene tutti. Questo è il mio corpo, offerto in sacrificio per voi». Allo stesso modo, dopo aver cenato, prese il calice. Ti rese grazie con la preghiera di benedizione. Lo diede ai suoi discepoli e disse, prendete e bevetene tutti. Questo è il calice del mio sangue per la nuova ed eterna alleanza, versato per voi e per tutti in remissione dei peccati. Fate questo in memoria di me.
celebrando il memoriale della passione e redentrice del tuo figlio, della sua ammirabile risurrezione e ascensione al cielo, in attesa della sua venuta nella gloria, ti offriamo, Padre, in rendimento di grazie, questo sacrificio vivo e santo. Guarda con amore e riconosci nell'offerta della tua Chiesa la vittima immolata per la nostra redenzione. E a noi che ci nutriamo del corpo e del sangue del tuo Figlio, dona la pienezza dello Spirito Santo, perché diventiamo in Cristo un solo corpo e un solo Spirito. Lo Spirito Santo faccia di noi un'offerta perenne a te gradita, perché possiamo ottenere il regno promesso con i tuoi eletti, con la Beata Maria, Vergine e Madre di Dio, San Giuseppe, suo Sposo, i tuoi santi apostoli, i gloriosi martiri e tutti i santi nostri intercessori presso di te. Ti preghiamo, oh Padre, questo sacrificio della nostra riconciliazione doni pace e salvezza al mondo intero. Conferma nella fede e nell'amore la tua chiesa pellegrina sulla terra, il tuo servo e il nostro Papa Francesco, l'ordine episcopale, i presbiteri, i diacani e il popolo che tu hai redento. Ascolta la preghiera di questa famiglia che hai convocato alla tua presenza nel giorno in cui Cristo ha vinto la morte e ci ha resi partecipe della sua vita immortale. Ricongiungi a te, Padre misericordioso, tutti i tuoi figli ovunque dispersi. Accogli nel tuo regno i nostri fratelli e sorelle defunti e tutti coloro che in pace con te hanno lasciato questo mondo. Concedi anche a noi di ritrovarci insieme a godere per sempre della tua gloria. In Cristo nostro Signore, per mezzo del quale tu, oh Dio, doni al mundo ogni bene. Per Cristo, con Cristo ed in Cristo, a te, Dio Padre Onnipotente, nell'unità dello Spirito Santo, ogni onore e gloria per tutti i secoli dei secoli. Father will now invite us to pray the Lord's Prayer. Guidati dallo Spirito di Gesù, illuminati dalla sapienza del Vangelo, siamo dire. Signore da tutti i mali, concedi la pace ai nostri giorni e con l'aiuto della Tua misericordia vivremo sempre liberi dal peccato e sicuri da ogni turbamento, nell'attesa che si compia la beata speranza 
e venga il nostro Salvatore Gesù Cristo. Signore Gesù Cristo, che hai detto ai tuoi apostoli, vi lascio la pace, vi do la mia pace. Non guardare ai nostri peccati, ma alla fede della tua Chiesa, e dona le unità e pace, secondo la tua volontà. Tu che vivi e regni nei secoli dei secoli. Amen. La pace del Signore sia sempre con voi. E con il tuo spirito. Agnello di Dio, ecco colui che toglie i peccati del mondo. Viate gli invitati alla cena dell'agnello. O oh Signore, non sono degno di partecipare alla tua messa, ma di soltanto una parola, e io sarò salvato. As our Holy Father now receives communion, we can all pray the prayer, O oh Lord. I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. participating in this Mass now beginning to receive our Lord. We too can ask to receive Him spiritually today if we are not able to participate in Holy Mass in person. receive the Eucharist, it's worth reflecting on the message of the Holy Father on this, the 36th World Youth Day, and we reflect on the Acts of the Apostles and the word, stand up, I appoint you as a witness of what you have seen. 
Last year's message from the Holy Father, he reminds us before the pandemic broke out, had its theme, Young man, I say to you, arise. Everywhere in the world, we suffered the loss of so many of our dear ones and experienced social isolation. This emergency was a particular setback for young people whose life is naturally directed outwards to their school or their university to work and social gatherings all that were severely interrupted. Yet, thank God this was only one side of the coin, says the Holy Father. The experience showed us our fragility, but it also revealed our virtues including our inclination to solidarity. All over the world, we saw great numbers of individuals, including many young people, helping to save lives, sowing seeds of hope, upholding freedom and justice, and acting as peacemakers and bridge builders. So whenever a young person falls, in some sense all humanity falls. Yet it's also true that when a young person rises, it's as if the whole world rises as well. Young people, what great potential you have in your hands, what great strength you have in your hearts. So this is the message of the Holy Father to you young people today. God is saying to each one of you, arise. I fervently hope that this message may help us prepare for new times and a new page in the history of humanity. Yet we cannot begin anew without you, dear young people. If our world is to arise, it needs your strength, your enthusiasm, your passion. I would like then to meditate with you on the passage of the Acts of the Apostles where Jesus says to St. Paul, Arise, I have appointed you to testify to what you have seen. Father then goes on to reflect on St. Paul's encounter with the Lord who calls him by name twice. And he says only a personal and non-anonymous encounter with Christ changes lives. So as you read again that passage from the Acts of the Apostles, remember as Pope Francis says that Jesus shows us that he knows Saul very well, inside out. As we too remain in prayer now, let us try to hear the Lord calling our name. For as our Holy Father says, he knows you and I inside out.
Paul's conversion did not involve turning back, but being open to a completely new way of seeing things. He continued on his journey to Damascus, but something had changed. Now he was a different person. Conversion can renew our everyday lives. We continue to do what we did before, but our hearts and motives are now changed. Our Holy Father also brings to our attention that when the Lord broke into Paul's life, he did not suppress his personality or passionate zeal, but he allowed his gifts to flower by making him a great herald of the gospel to the very ends of the earth. We now prepare ourselves to end this liturgy as we pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorifying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom. And we prepare ourselves now for to receive the Holy Father's blessing. Signore sia con voi. E con il tuo spirito. Sia benedetto il nome del Signore. Ora e sempre. Il nostro aiuto è nel nome del Signore. Egli ha fatto cielo e terra. Vi benedica Dio Onnipotente, Padre, Figlio e Spirito Santo. Amen. Ite is customary after papal liturgies our holy father now moving to the image of our lady where they will sing together the marian antiphon the salve regina and with these images we now bring this live broadcast of the liturgy presided over by pope francis on this solemnity of the of christ the king of the universe in which World Youth Day has been celebrated. We bring this to a close. For c full coverage of today's liturgy, I invite you to go to our Vatican News web portal, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter accounts. But we will be back shortly for the weekly broadcast of the Pope's Sunday recitation of the Angelus with the faithful gathered in St. Peter's Square. Once again, I'd like to thank our media partners who've made this broadcast possible. Catholic TV, WTN, Salt and Light TV at Madarshan TV, Catholic Faith Network, Shalom World Television Networks, Shalom TV in India, Radio Maria in the Philippines, and Luminous Radio. Thanks also to Sean Doherty for joining me this morning and for our audio technicians in studio. May all of you have a blessed feast of Christ the King. Laudetur Jesus Christus, praised be Jesus Christ. <laughs>